I hope there are some people here who have prepared a mini presentation. Um, if not, maybe um, you can take the time when the first presentations happen to come up with an own presentation. As we don't have too much time, I'd, I'd rather uh, keep them short, so maybe you can stick to two, three or four minutes, something around that, so that we have time to discuss afterwards too. Um, during the presentations, I will try to collect, collect interesting topics, issues that we can um, discuss afterwards so that we mm, can keep the discussion focused on, on several points and not just talk about everything that comes to our mind. Yeah, then we'll see what the summary will be. So just as a reminder, that's a, a shorter version of the questions I've sent out via mail. Uh, and I just leave the slide up there. Uh, maybe it helps some of you for the presentations. And that's about all I wanted to say at the beginning. So, yeah, Lucas? Uh, Lucas is asking about the copy session. Well, I, I could start the copy session if someone tells me how to do it. The other thing is I've asked him if he could take notes during the buff and he kindly agreed to do so. So I think we will be, uh, or I will be able to produce a nice protocol afterwards with, with Tim's notes, if that's okay. <coughs> Fine. So, which teams do we have in, in the room? Image Magic team. Image Magic? Image Magic. Okay. We have some, yeah, sec. Okay. 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 We have some people from the Debian Pearl group. I know them. Hmm? Ruby, okay. Andreas? Debian Mate. Debian Mate. Debian Science. Science. In science, yes. I knew it's the QTKDE team. KDE? <laughs> okay, so... I work on the GNOME one. Pardon? GNOME. GNOME, okay. So we also have some large package te packaging teams. Uh, was a VIP, but uh, I don't do much work in the team, but a bit. Yeah, maybe you can still just give us an overview spontaneously. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so, who wants to start with giving us a short overview about what you're doing, what you're using, and what the successes and challenges are that you might want to share? <laughs> Several microphones running around. Thank you very much. Well, um, I just to start with your items, the communication is basically done with a mailing list. We try to attract members wherever we can at DEPCONF. I get, try to get my grip on people who are working in the medical field. They are not showing up. They are looking on their keyboard currently. Um, infrastructure, we have um, uh, well done a lot of um, QA-related stuff, which is basically um, to, build, um, uh, base, uh, pack, uh, to build web pages of the interesting packages for us. We have some bug overview. We have some a page and I also listed some um, packages we are interested in with descriptions and translated descriptions. We are doing sponsoring for non-Debian developers and um, somebody has written a policy how our packages should be look like and how we are working with uh, uh, BCS. We are using SVN repository, repository on Elliot. And well, we have uh, some tools to, to build this web stuff and we want to also spread these experiences. Um, I've done, uh, I have a very interested, uh, interesting experience done when I prepared my talk about these healthy CDDs and I'm, perhaps you have seen it and I will present it in a lightning talk on, on the last DEPCONF day. Um, 
it is very interesting if you look at who actually is posting to the mailing list. Um, I found out that many, many mailing lists are driven by a single person. And um, I will have done some graphs about the 10 most active posters over several years. And you see if it is the mailing list is driven by a single person, it, it can die. It can just die and the team will die. And you have to try to make sure that this will not happen by making sure that you get other people involved to, to make a team that is not only needed by one leader. So, so this is the basic idea. So you are constantly trying to recruit new members yep. in order to keep the group running. Yes, that's the idea. Is there anything speci special you do about the recruitment and induction? Well, uh, well being friendly to, uh, friendly to new members, try to um, ask them for just giving introduction to become known to the other, mm -hmm. and being helpful, this is basically what we are doing. So okay. more social gen uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, Should I go to uh, give to Debian Science? Or do you do you have anything that that's currently a problem and where you would like to get input? Well, well I I think the team is fairly working well. It's the 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 good thing in the Debian Meet team is that it's more or less un, uh, unimportant. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Well, well, it is it is a small user group and we doing. Things on on uh, not so many packages, and this makes some things more easy than uh, in other groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be honest, but it, it works fairly well in in this um, area. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, thanks, Andreas. So, um, Frederic Leobe, I, I am one of the members of the the team uh, Debian Science. I followed the items. Uh, for the communication, we have the Debian Science mailing list uh, and also um, a Debian Science maintainers mailing list. I would first uh, stress on the fact that uh, we are not only a packaging team and we, mm -hmm. we see ourselves as a, as a fallback for packaging when there is not a better team dedicated to such focus. For mm -hmm. example, okay. there are other teams like PKG SciComp Sci or uh, DBCAM that are mainly focused, or, or Andreas already told, it, or told everything at the, the CD session, but when people focus on packaging, then we are happy with that. But we share experience uh, when people want team maintenance with respect to science, but without having a dedicated team. So that's where Debian Science shows mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to the members, well, they are listed on the earlier page. I think four people are uh, running this currently, the, the main leaders. Um, the infrastructure, we have uh, Git repositories on Aliot. Uh, the, with respect to the packaging, it's very new. The policy is being written currently, so I would say we have something like two months of experience, so it's, it's a bit too short to, to, to make uh, feedback. <coughs> yes, as, as I said, we have a policy. <laughs> so yes, we, we have written a policy, and we, we take in inspiration from the other group's policy just to take the, the best practice somewhere else. Tools Git, I said it. Uh, the challenges are to um, to welcome new members always because the the scientific tools require some sometimes very specific knowledge and uh, that are not well shared uh, even among the the scientific community. So, um, well, as Andreas said, uh, we we try to be friendly to the newcomers and the, the general idea is. Um, I forgot what I did. Yes, to take to take advantage. Actually, what, what what we do is to take advantage of all the tools already existing for the Debian Med CDD. So mm -hmm. everything that uh, Andreas works on, then we take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. I think I've said everything. Could I maybe s say one or more, one or two other sentences yeah. about your relationship to other to the other teams? Because you you said you are trying to be be fallback. Yeah, we so we try to follow. Well, it's it's mainly done uh, by human process. There is nothing automatic, but we try to follow the mailing list of the other packaging team just to know what happens by them. We follow the ITPs with uh, debt tax, mm -hmm. so you can find all the all the. It it, it should be more um, integrated mm -hmm. into our process. Maybe thanks to the CDD tools uh, Andreas is working on, but now uh, on the Debian Science page or on the um, 
the Sentinel page automatically generated, you can follow the ITPs mm -hmm. from the other group. Even if someone outside Debian Science is creating a package, then we follow the ITP mm -hmm. just to... <coughs> okay. So we are, we're using meta packages for following that. Mm -hmm. So that has been described in the CDD uh, uh, talk of Andreas. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And there'll be w there'll, there will be one more <laughs> talk for, uh, around Debian Science from Andreas tomorrow afternoon, if I don't mistake. Uh -huh. I think that that's an interesting point, which we should remember. Okay, who's next? Uh, so, uh, voice over IP. So, uh, as I said, uh, I don't really ha have a good, complete overview uh, of the whole team, but uh, we communicate mo mostly by our uh, mailing list. Uh, and um, also a bit uh, 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 directly through uh, SVN uh, uh, commit logs. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, sometimes I read the commit logs, I find an error, I just fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, Infrastructure-wise, uh, uh, we actually uh, have a um, private uh, BLD farm, uh, which automatically uh, builds um, uh, every, uh, uh, well, w once per day, uh, I think, uh, the SVN uh, trunk uh, for SID uh, as backports uh, for different versions of Ubuntu. Uh, uh, it's quite uh, uh, a large uh, spread. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we find that uh, really useful. Um, you, uh, you're removing the... <laughs> Uh, the list of oh points. sorry I just need to take a note because otherwise I, okay. I forget everything um, so uh, we have several non DD um, members uh, and um, so um, they commit to the um, SVN and uh, the, uh, so uh, uh, the changes uh, get uploaded uh, uh, with the next uh, upload so, uh, as I've already implicitly uh, said, uh, it's, um, uh, uh, it's all um, SVN with um, SVN uh, build package and, uh, uh, and no upstream sources uh, in our SVN. Mm -hmm. Is there anything special non DDs have to do to get a package uploaded? Um, sorry? Is there some anything special that non DDs have to do if they want to have a package uploaded? Or is there some regular workflow for doing that? Um, not that I know of. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, they just bug. Uh, I think they just bug, bug the orders, uh, bug the DDs on the mailing list. Okay. Uh, it's ready. Go. Um, mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, we uh, uh, we seem to get uh, new members uh, m m mostly b b by uh, finding uh, that they file an ITP that. Uh, th th that that uh, goes in into uh, voice over IP. We uh, we email them and say, do you want to do that uh, mm -hmm. in voice over IP? And say, oh sure, good. Uh, they come. Um, as far uh, as I'm personally concerned, I'm uh, very happy of um, having put uh, my packages there. Um, I mean, um, they are often a bit even faster than. I am uh, for new upstream version, mm -hmm. so often um, when I get to that item on my to-do list, oops, uh, it's already <laughs> done. I must say that also uh, once uh, it was badly broken and, up, uh, and uploaded broken, but, um, uh, uh, it happens. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I have anything else to say. Okay. Anything you'd like to add to my list of topics for discussing later? Um, well, uh, personally, um, uh, uh, as a low in intensity um, um, member of uh, several teams, uh, I find it difficult uh, to uh, to remember uh, and to adapt to the different working flows. Okay. Uh, uh, SVN with upstream sources, uh, SVN w without uh, upstream sources, Git, um, uh, Quilt, it's... Uh, I have to learn two tools per package, roughly. And mm -hmm. 
uh, no, uh, per um, team. And even if teams share tools, they use them in different ways. Uh, it's uh, frankly, it's getting um, uh, to be a barrier for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Zach gets two microphones. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm Zach. I'm a member of several teams, but I will, will just introduce the OCaml team, which is a team maintaining a fairly large amount of packages. We have about 100 source packages. And I'm very happy about the result of the team because we are frequently referred by our upstream uh, as the distribution with the best OCaml support in, in, in the field. So we are quite happy about our results. We communicate, as I think all large packaging projects, with both a mailing list and an IRC channel. As an infrastructure, we used to have um, a subversion repository with a Debian-only layout of SBN build package, but now we are slowly moving to Git. Uh, we had an experience with uh, enabling uh, commit access to every DD and every alias user on our repository. I think it's the way to go, but I don't think everybody outside our team has ever committed to the <laughs> repository, actually. Um, other infrastructure parts are GNOME-like status page, in which we see the, the version in the various dist distribution in Debian, what needs to be rebuilt, and blah, blah. We have our own policy, which have been floating around, I think, since 2002, so it has quite an history. Uh, I don't think any team-specific problem with our team, but I was just going to make the very same point Lionel just made. Mm -hmm. So I'm a member of several teams, something like 10 teams, and while I don't see any way to standardize on a single tool chain, because every team is willing to have his own convention and it has the right to do so, I see the lack of a way to document, a lack of a common way where to document these team-specific uh, procedures. So stuff like starting to use more readme.source to document branch layout or something like that <coughs> is, is really something we need to, to, do, uh, to adopt. And the other point I was mentioning with you yesterday night is that mm -hmm. I don't see a common usage of the distinction between maintainers and uploaders. And this, I think this should be addressed Debian-wide, like saying that in the uploaders, as the people in GNOME is doing, in the uploaders there are the last 10 person or five person who worked on the package and anybody else is, is not in the uploaders fields or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I, I am currently working with, uh, on two groups. I'm mostly active, uh, well, uh, I've been mo mostly inactive due to work uh, the last couple of months, but uh, uh, the, the group I've worked uh, closest with is the Pearl Group, which uh, Gregor kindly didn't uh, introduce because he wanted to be polite and al allow the, al the audience to, 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 to do this. And, uh, well, the Pearl Group and the Ruby Extras uh, group, uh, both, uh, both are very, very similar in what they try to package, but uh, work in quite uh, different ways. Uh, the Perl group, well, we handle the communication mostly around, uh, uh, well, uh, some of you were in Tincha's talk, uh, uh, around the PET, the it's Package it's Entropy. the Carter, correct name, yeah. The correct name. Okay. Uh, that, that's, uh, well, a single page where, where we can Basically, basically see the whole overview of uh, what our uh, group uh, needs to work on. And of course, we coordinate uh, more uh, uh, finely uh, on lists on, or on IRC, as, uh, as I guess most, uh, mostly everybody does. But that's our main communication tool. Uh, membership is also, uh, uh, I mean, uh, by default, every Debian developer is a member, uh, the, the uh, Alliot repository as uh, Zach said, accept commit from from non-members, but I think uh, well, I think we have had some, right? Well, mm -hmm. uh, some. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, so, so yes, we're using that, and we have our packages listed also in the low threshold NMUs. Mm -hmm. uh, well, infrastructure that's more or less the same. Uh, for sponsoring, uh, one of the main goals of this uh, tool, the PET, was to 
uh, not to require people to write to the list asking for a sponsor. You just upload, and when it's ready, somebody will upload it. Uh, we have a set of policies that, uh, well, even some things we, we, did, we haven't uh, written down, but a, a, a good deal of the communication is even by writing inval invalid change log, change log entries. Yeah, so we know if there is an invalid change log entry, something must be fixed in that package. Uh, of course, sometimes uh, we don't remember to <laughs> validate it again, but <laughs> no, uh, it, it gets fixed. And uh, we, we work around the SVM build package. Uh, well, that's uh, basically it. I think uh, I, I'm very happy with that group. I think it's uh, well, a great success, uh, a great success story on, on how those, t those tools are integrated and built. Uh, and well, uh, this is not to say the experience with the uh, Ruby's group is, is bad, no, not at all. But, but, but it strikes me that it's so different the way using the same tools we get a, such a different result. Uh, uh, but well, f uh, I am not so much involved in the Ruby's gr uh, Ruby group, so I think I'll throw this over to Lucas, who's also here. With the microphone in the hand, so. <laughs> okay, thanks, Connor. Yeah, so I'm in charge of the Ruby group. Uh, I agree that uh, Ruby is still the, 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 the microphone, please. Can I get this microphone? Okay. So I'm involved in the Ruby group. Um, uh, I, as Connor said, I agree that uh, maybe we don't get as many as much good good results as a Perl team, but still. Um, so it's a fairly standard team, I think. Well, we don't do anything really special. Um, we use SVN build package. We standardize. Oh, something that is interesting, maybe to discuss later, is that we standardize on a CDBS class, so that all our libs are really simple to package. And I'm not sure that all teams do that, and it would be interesting to discuss why some teams don't do that. Um, and s we developed something that is specific to the team, but that actually something that should go to use can. We just developed a wrapper around use can that allows to get the upstream source since we use a Debian lay layout. And something else that something else that I had on my notes is that uh, we should maybe discuss about. It's similar to what Zach said, but it's how you organize inside teams who is responsible for, for a specific package. Because often you have some people who are more familiar with one or two packages, and uh, it's difficult to know who is mainly responsible for some packages, and how that reflects in maintainers and uploaders. So uh, just, just to get it right, the, the question is if, if members are responsible for specific packages or, or for all packages or some, something else, that would be a question we could discuss later. Yeah, the question is uh, whether, well, I know that some teams don't have a specific uh, responsible person for each package, so everybody just maintains everything, but that leads to people not knowing exactly what is happening on uh, every package because they are not very familiar with the package. And uh, what we do in the Ruby team is that we try to, in the Ruby extra team, is that we try to have at least one person that is that feels responsible about each package, mm -hmm. even if mm -hmm. the other are here as backup. So uh, when there's a problem, uh, at least someone is supposed to react. This doesn't always work, but maybe that's an, a small improvement. Uh -huh. OK, thanks. Um, hi, I'm Martin. Um, res answering to what Lucas said, um, that's, that's something that I've been thinking about sometimes. Uh, and I think one of the strongest points in the pack group is that um, although there is nobody in charge of a package, uh, still we manage to keep them more or less in good shape. And also, I think that it's good to, to people who want to help somehow to not restrict them to some packages, uh, because I have the experience in some groups that you want to start working, you just pick a package, start working on them, and then you realize that that package was not meant to be touched by anybody else 
uh, except for the, from the designated maintainer. So I think that more or less um, make is, makes that package not in a, in a team. It's a one person effort. And I think that um, makes the, 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 wor the, the group less strong. Uh, before we get into, into the discussion, I think it was showing good for showing the two sides, but, but still, are there some other teams here who we've missed so far? Any other short presentations? Ah, yeah, the GNOME team, thanks. I, I don't think I have much to add. We communicate through a mailing list and IRC channel. Our members are, uh, we have quite a few active members, but there are two or three who are who really push the work uh, forward. We are always trying to recruit because GNOME is a very large piece of software and very complex to maintain also. I think the main problem we have is actually bug triaging. Mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure, for infrastructure we use SVN with, uh, with SVN build package using a very Debian specific, I, I think actually even GNOME team specific layout. Um, I don't know of any discussion of moving to another VCF, v VCS as the, at this time. Um, we do have some work uh, being done on policies and specific tools on the GNOME team, but most of them are already integrated in Deb Helper and, and policy if needed be. So it's not something something we we actively have to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we do have lots of interactions with other teams like for instance the the G G Streamer team, but mostly the most people who work on the teams are are related or the same people. Mm -hmm. So not not a lot of problems there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We have a status page also, which has been written by. Actually, we had lo lots of revisions of a status page, uh, <coughs> written by members of the team, and it's ad hoc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so I, I wanted to add to to what he said. <coughs> uh, well, actually, we recently discussed. Well very shortly, but uh, discussed uh, on whether to stay on, uh, on subversion or to move to a distributed VCS. S but we decided that uh, we're staying with uh, subversion because, uh, well, the, our group's work needs to be precisely centralized. So if we, if we used any other kind of tool, we would still be using it in a centralized way. And, uh, well, we decided that the current way works as, as it should. Now, uh, the Perl group works with the also w w with the layout tool, right? Uh, is it that uh, and with the full upstream sources included in the tree? So our subversion tree is huge. I well, it's a long time since I, last time I, I I tried to do a full checkout, and I will not do it ever again. Uh, no, it's uh, it's ridiculous, but. Uh, this is uh, a bit in contrast, for example, well, we have uh, ni uh, 900 packages and I don't know how many revisions for each one of them. Everything is uh, in full. On the other hand, uh, in the Ruby group, uh, the, the, the upstream sources are not tracked. Yep. So uh, the, the full repository can be checked out at any time and it's uh, quite uh, light to work with, although it's a bit more pro problematic sometimes to, to well, we have to separately get the the packages in order to make the, the patches. So it's well uh, different uh, ways of working, and uh, f well, people think differently. Just to add, just to add another point, an extra point which Gunnar just made me remind. Uh, I would like to have uh, better tools to do changes to all packages in a given uh, team uh, in a batch fashion. So sometimes you, you change your best practices and you need to actually deploy the changes to all, to all packages and it's not that always easy. I think there are quite a lot of ad hoc tools to do that and just one, I think, contrib script in SVN build package 
But for example, for other VCS, I'm not aware of any tool. Mm -hmm. OK. So do we have any other presentation? It's about half past, so it's not bad if we don't. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I'd like to thank everybody who has prepared and shared their experiences. Uh, that's what I've just been writing down here, so probably nobody except me will understand it, and I'm not sure if I will understand it. But these were some of the issues that were raised now in the last half hour, and we can use the remaining, don't know, 20 minutes to, well, pick one, two, three of them and try to bring them a little further. Which one should we start with? Any opinions? Third one. <coughs> the third one, the question about um, bringing the, dif <coughs> the different workflows, tools, documentations a little bit more together. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Zach, do you have already any ideas or is this just a... Do you already have any ideas for <coughs> bringing the, the tools, workflows closer together, or documenting them better? Well, there is already a mechanism to do that, which is in policy, which is Debian readme.source. I understand, uh, so th this is a way which is package specific, and actually Debian is mostly package specific or package oriented, so it is the good place where to document like branches layout for distributed VCS or stuff like that. And actually we also have a way to do that per team, which is the wiki Debian org slash teams pages, which is supposed to be a set of pages with the similar layout to document team specific stuff, it is just need to be, uh, I think, advertised more, mm -hmm. the, the two of them, and okay, I mean, I can, we, we can look for some new mechanism to do that, but we already have them, it's just a matter to use them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so readme source and the wiki slash team would be places for, for improving documentation. Well, mm -hmm. I haven't, I'm not aware of any no. objection about using them, so it's probably just a matter to spread the word. Okay, Lucas? sense to do is to have uh, a specific package for each team that contains all the developer oriented stuff like for us CDBS class and uh, documentation for standardized things inside the team so you can you know, it's a, it became it becomes a build dependency for every package in the team and uh, that I think that's maybe better to document things there instead of documenting on the wiki actually so it's in the package it's accessible when you are offline etc Okay, you, so using a separate, how do you call that, meta package? Well, not a technical, but <coughs> abstraction package yeah, might so be another way to document. Yes, mm -hmm. The point is to have less things in each package and to have the common things right. in, the, in a single package. So you don't have to exchange readme source in 900 packages. For example, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other opinions? Maybe we can also take this maintainers and uploaders uh, topic here. I think the the question was if it's if it might be useful to have a more common way of who should be in uploaders or not. If it's not useful, then uh, every team can continue to do so like they they are doing now. If it's useful then is there something that might be okay for everyone? I haven't checked, but some, some time ago, GANEF filed a lot of bugs on each package where the maintainer was not uh, a real person, where, it, where the maintainer pointed to a team. How do you do that in the Perl team? Do you have maintainer? Yeah, you have the maintainer Debian Perl group, I think. Yeah. And you didn't com complain about this? Well, the thing is, all of our packages, uh, the maintainer is a group, but they all have uploaders. Okay, so yeah. yeah. 
I think that's also what Lindsay is checking for now. Yes. Something like no, no human being or so, something like that. About the uploaders thing, uh, I think that the GNOME team, uh, they do something that, sh that, that makes a lot of sense, is to use the last five or last ten uh, uploaders, um, um, change log entries actually, uh, authors of change log entries in the uploaders field. So you get the list of the last persons that were active. And so it expires over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was aware of that practice, which I really like. It's just a matter to bring your tool and put in some standard place where everybody can use it. More generally, I think this raises the point of if we have a place where to put uh, uh, tools for teams. Yeah. And I don't think we have one of one such a place. Yeah, we could use dev scripts. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. Dev scripts. Ah. Well, dev scripts might be appropriate for, for small scripts, but uh, I've also been thinking about this, this web-based tools. It seems like every, at least every other group has some, some status page or some, some other <coughs> web application. Uh, now at least we, we know about some of them, but um, still it might be helpful to, to bring them together, or at least as a first step, make them, them easier available. Uh, can, we do, can we do a, qu a quick poll to know who, uh, who is using what? Because there's PET for the Perl team. And what else? There's SVN build stat. I don't know if some tools are using it. Some. Something else? I think then there is the GNOME status page, which at least me have shamelessly copied for the OCaml team. I don't know if there is some other variation of it around. Well, the Debian Matt team has, uh, I think, also some, some web stuff that might be uh, not yet mentioned. And there was also some, the Debian Science team, you said you're, you're tracking bugs on some web page. Well, this stuff, this stuff is based on, on these task files. You have to create, create some task files with interesting packages. You can do this uh, in principle for, for any group maintained packages. Um, if you want, I can give some short introduction in, in a silent room or so, and then you can use these uh, tools as well, yes. It would be interesting to that someone uh, write a specification that summarizes what every tool does, and then that we write a single tool that everybody can use, because it's really stupid to have so many different tools that do basically the same thing. Yeah. I'm not going to do that, but uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, if, what I, of course, can offer is if, if people send, send me a, a mail with these descriptions or with pointers to where these tools are or whatever, I can try to, to create an, an overview of, of all this stuff. That, that's no problem. If it comes to more technical uh, questions, then maybe I will need some help afterwards. Okay, so that's one point we can uh, add to the summary that we are trying to collect to get an overview of, of the existing tools <coughs> with the, well, long-term or mid-term uh, objective of bringing them, them together and making them useful for, for everyone. Good. <coughs> Regarding this, this uh, standardization of documentation and main, uh, or maintainer and uploaders, do we have some, something to write down to? I actually have one last point on the tool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Right now we have a lot of tools, but they are opt-in, so it means that every team need to ask someone like SVN will start or Tinch of a pet to install the tool for them or something like that. It would be really great to have it, great to have it uh, uh, by default, so that uh, if I'm used to use some, some tool, I can go to whatever team and see its instance for the team. Mm -hmm. So the other part is, of course, discovering the documentation or this configuration details or something like that. 
And so I think it would benefit to have something like the, the Teams page, uh, I don't know, in a standard format that you can just extract the, the URL and configure it by default. Would that be possible, for example, for Pet? Um, yes, the only problem is that um, if you en enable it for every group, uh, some of them won't like it because it takes a little time during commit. So maybe it's not a good idea of by enabling, enabling by default, but you can enable it only in cron jobs, so it will not be instantly updated, but it will work anyways for everybody. Um, yes, can be done easily. Okay, so coming back to my last uh, question, well, it's fine. Is there something we can agree on on this this common documentation stuff on uh, this maintainers uploaders? How many? How long? How often? Or is this just fine how it is that every group does it how they like it? Oh, Andreas. Well, I think the groups are so different that you can't really compare these this points. And uh, we, we just upload if, if there is anything to upload. And other groups uh, have some other means. So I, I don't think that it makes sense to compare this. Mm -hmm. okay. I actually think this needs to be fixed because right now, it is the, the meaning of the maintainer and uploaders field, which our user can see in the package, which is really different according to where the package comes from. So probably this is something which is worth standardizing in, in, by policy. So deciding what is the, the, the real meaning of uploaders and what is the real meaning of maintainer is something which really needs to be done, I think. Ah, I thought you wanted to say something. <laughs> okay, so let's keep let's <coughs> keep that in mind that there's at least some confusion here. Good. Uh, we already started the, the discussion a bit uh, early <laughs> about the advantages and disadvantages of members being responsible for specific packages or members of the group being responsible for all packages. Uh, I think the main points were, uh, Lucas has, has said if someone is responsible for one package then he knows about it and, and others might break something if, uh, if this summary is... Uh, well, well, ju just a minute, please let Lucas clarify. So, well, the problem we had... In, sorry? The problem we had in the um, uh, Ruby team is that some people just came to the team and dumped a very package on us and then left, disappear. So we have to, we are quite understaffed and we have to maintain packages that we never had any use for per mm -hmm. personally. And uh, that really sucks. So with the goal of uh, having one person responsible for the package was to have at least to know who to ping when there's a problem. and. Mm -hmm. and, when, and when no one else has time to fix it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Tincho has presented the other uh, opinion. Well, the teamwork is about everybody can touch each package and it's better for quality because if someone has time, then he just, hmm? oh, okay. I'd like to add just a little more. <coughs> I think that in practice, um, what we had seen is that if you really know some package, you end working on it quite often, and the others know that you, you know better, so they will ask you. Uh, but if you're not around, they will try to fix it or wait for you. Uh, I think that's part of, of teamwork, mm -hmm. uh, trying to talk with uh, each other. I think René wanted to say something before. I've, I've skipped you. Okay. Well, uh, I think the, the, the main reason why this works so well in our group is that uh, there it's so uh, per packaging is so homogeneous. Most of uh, I mean most of the CPAN, which is as large as it can be, uh, falls one out of uh, three possible ways of building. 
so we don't have much variation. So we have uh, adopted, uh, mass adopted uh, orphaned uh, packages and so, and they're not such much, so much of a burden because they're not updated often. often. So, but, uh, but it doesn't mean the same thing will work in, uh, for example, well, uh, we will later talk about how broken Ruby gems can be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it might be a different situation for different groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense to me. Anything else on this topic? Uh, I just think that what he was, what Martin was saying, uh, may, may work with a person being uh, the official maintainer for a package. I used to be official maintainer for Glade, for instance, and I just didn't care if anyone worked on Glade in the GNOME package, in the GNOME team. So our team usually usually works as, just like Martin said, but with a person usually being the responsible, the specific responsible for a package. But there's no policy on that, so it would be, it would be good to, to have some kind of decision on, on what, what should be done, because I agree that we not being a, a a project opinion on what maintainers and uploaders, for instance, although I agree that a GNOME, way, GNOME pack team way of doing it is the best one, uh, it would be even better if we had a, a specific decision of the project and what it, me what it means, because I agree that the users get confused about it, and that even us, when we are report reporting bugs, don't know who to ping and or to, to harass to fix a bug. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I tend to, to, uh, 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 to see things a bit uh, in the middle, uh, uh, that I like uh, one person uh, or, or small um, subgroup uh, that works well to feel responsible uh, for the good state uh, of a package, uh, that, uh, that they consider that if it doesn't happen, it's their um, uh, uh, failure. Uh, 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 but that anybody in the larger team uh, can do any uh, useful work on any package uh, of the team. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do in the Ruby team, actually. The point is not that only one person is, rep is responsible for each package. Everybody is, rep is responsible for uh, each package. For, yeah, for all packages, but uh, one person has to feel responsible, mainly responsible about one of them, one, about each of them. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, bef before you give away the mic, uh, is, is this documented somewhere? Or is this, has this something to do with the uploaders and maintainer fields? Uh, yeah, we, we set the maintainer to the mainly responsible person okay. and the uploader to the team, I think, yeah and to maybe the, the other persons that really feel responsible about the package. Ah, yeah, okay, thanks. Also, well, in, the, in the Ruby group, we have a very interesting uh, triaging tool called Paul van Tilburg. He usually p pings the right person when there's a bug which hasn't been taken care of. <laughs> uh, 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 in, on the IRC, uh, they're asking, who is this, uh, Frank Thomas? He's asking to relay a question can somebody, uh, uh, please, what should one do if there are several people on a team, but only one maintainer is really active and working on the packages? How can the other members be motivated to also do some work? Well, uh, uh, a method, uh, oh, sorry, um, well, a method that uh, I've seen uh, work uh, in that c context is uh, for the person uh, that does uh, all the work to stop doing it. Um, then two or three or four people um, step up and start doing work and you can come in later again. Uh, sometimes it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other ideas on this question? Mm -hmm. I think this is also related and maybe we can use the last two minutes. Hmm? 
something like that. Uh, to to this this social questions, especially to to this how to recruit and um, induce new new members. I mean, my one one of my opinions is as Sledge Survey has found out uh, that the work has to be fun. So maybe we can shortly think about what makes it fun to work in in groups. Not about the fun, but about recruiting people. Uh, I think that uh, it's very good, both for the groups and for the newcomers, to make the people that is starting to to get into Debian, starting to get into NM, to work in teams instead of working on uh, independent packages. I think it's much more enriching to learn from a group than to learn from policy and Google. <coughs> Um, in my in my experience, I learned much more in the per group than any other place, even in NM. Okay, get the sign times up. So maybe one last. Oh, I comment. Oh, um, I I kind of wish that someone else would say something after me. But um, as far as the fun point, one of the most fun things is going to a package to try to fix to say, oh, I haven't worked on this in two months and. It had this really bad bug that I really wasn't looking forward to trying to fix, and then discovering it already has been fixed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have being friendly to people from, from before, trying to grab them if they file ITPs or ask on, on mentors for uploads or whatever. Uh, <coughs> we have this, it makes fun because others help me, and that's just good to see. Yeah, and we have that uh, learning is easier in a, in a group than just at home reading documents, which might not apply for everybody, but I, I feel the same. So, uh, well, I think that that was this buff. Thanks you all for coming. <coughs> I will prepare a summary protocol minutes, however that's called in proper English with Tim's notes. Thank, thanks a lot to you. And if I get some pointers to, to the existing tools. I can also try to prepare a well, summary of the, of the existing tools, which might help to improve the situation. Do you think that we should have another buff about this? Maybe uh, tomorrow or Saturday after you, have, you go through all the notes and summarize things a bit? Okay. Maybe, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, well, I, I would, I would like that, but I'm not sure if it's just me or... <laughs> yes. Um, it's not just you. I support this. I think it's, it's efficient if we can do this while we are all here, uh -huh. if it's possible. So I, I support Lucas' ID. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Yeah, well, uh, I think now time's really over as I get the time's up sign for the fourth time. So thank you all.